Don't talk about red side, sleep, sleep when I'm dead. When I'm dead. Motherfucker wanna come through tripping. Listen, I'ma rip it, I'ma kung fu, kung kick fu. Kick Tell them I'm already if you want it, you can get it. If it's heavy, I'ma push it. I ain't never seen a Welcome everybody to True Exact Show. I'm here with Brian, our special guest. Uh, someone who I actually had the pleasure of eating their food 18 years ago. I can't believe it's been that long, man. Uh, well renowned chef. Uh, out in Hollywood, the private chef, author too. I believe you wrote a cookbook, Richard Florzak. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Good to see you, my friend. No, you too. Um, yeah, so it's been a long time, and everyone who I had talked to about that day in particular, where I went to your house and my parents, and um, you cooked the best meal I ever had in my life, and I always bring that up. The uh, pizza. I believe you had an awesome dog, Lexi, at the time. If I yes. if I remember. Yeah, Make good, sure. good memory. I have a great memory. I know. It's awesome. Thank you for that compliment. So what we want to know, though, is like people people always wonder, like, how did you end up out there in L.A., in Hollywood, when you grew up in a small town in uh, Boundbrook, New Jersey, like right right over the border from Middlesex, from us? Yeah, wow. Well, uh, you know, it's I, I think it's an interesting story. Uh, believe it yeah. or not, I, I went to film school in, in Manhattan. Mm. I, I I thought I wanted to be in film, and the, the the whole while I was going to school, I was working in in a hospital kitchen in our local Somerset Medical Center kitchen. My my best friend convinced me to get a job there on the weekends. I he was washing pots, and I said, "I am not interested in washing <laughs> pots." You got to be kidding me! He goes, "Rich, there's chicks all over the place." I said, "Get me an application, right?" So anyway, I started. Started working there, and and the chef saw that I was interested, uh, you know, in what they were doing. So he asked me to work with them on the cook's table, and I did that for four years while I was going to uh, film school in New York. Moved to California in uh, early to mid eighties. Uh, after after graduating film school, I was there six months. Realized I wanted nothing to do with that business. Mm. Didn't, did, didn't like it at all, all the while working in the food industry. So this what, one day I just... I don't, uh, I don't mean to cut you off, but what, what didn't you like about it? Uh, I, I didn't like the whole lifestyle. Mm. Uh, I didn't get along with the people there. Um, they, they, they certainly weren't of my politics. You know, not that I was heavily into politics at the time, but I'm, you know, I'm raised a Catholic and, uh, you know that that's you know part of my background and right, right, right. I, I just it, it wasn't a good fit for you know what you know what the bottom line is i wasn't that interested in it i realized one day that i was i was more interested in the image mm. of being in the film business <laughs> than i than i was doing that kind of work anyway made the decision i went back to culinary school i worked for a number of different caterers and you know, we'd be coming home on the catering truck at night and it's three o'clock in the morning and you just worked a 10 hour shift and everything. And I'm like, man, this is really kicking my butt. And I overheard this other chef talking about how during the week he's a he's a private chef. And I had already worked in restaurants as well. Did the Bel Air Hotel for four years. Anyway, he, I said, private chef. I'd never heard of that before. I said, tell, tell me about that. He says, well, I work for the actress Amy Irving. She used to be married to uh, Steven Spielberg. And uh, I work for her full time. I'm her pers private chef. I travel with her. And I thought, man, that that is exactly what I wanted to do. He hooked me up with uh, his agent. And the agent got me my first job uh, as a private chef. Now, agencies, that's that's a, I, I have a really good question about that. I like to think it's a good question. You could correct me if I'm wrong. But, like, acting agencies, they'll get you an audition. When it's a chef agent, how does that, do you have to, like, cook for the people and they taste them? Like, yeah, I want this guy. How does that work? No, you're right. That is a good question. Every uh, client is different. This mm -hmm. particular job that they set me up for, you're not going to believe this Go setup for it. there. It was an, an, a young 80-year-old 80, 80 couple. I mean, they were very young, you know, for, for being 80. It was just the two of them. They had a full-time secretary, a full-time driver, a live-in housekeeper, 
a butler who trained at Buckingham Palace and me, their chef. They ate a four course formal dinner every single night served by the butler. Okay. So I went up for this interview and I, I was I was actually I, I didn't want it because I had just missed out on a, a, a job with Sylvester Stallone. I mm. thought that I had the job. As a matter of fact, uh, just by pure coincidence, when I went in for the interview, I didn't meet him, but I met his assistant. He's the one that, that uh, 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 you know, I gave my resume to. I had my interview with. Turns out, I kept saying to him, I know you from somewhere. Turns out he used to hang out at this same uh, English pub that I used to go to all the time in, nice. uh, in Santa Monica. But he basically told me I had the job, but I didn't get it. And I was so depressed. And this other job came up. I really didn't even want it, but I went up for the the interview and they just flat out gave it to me. Uh, I just really? must have made, I must have made a good impression in the, in the uh, interview. Uh, I was with them for four years. I learned a ton of stuff about uh, fine service, fine food, the, the butler told me that the, uh, uh, the what do you call it, the uh, place where they keep all the walk-in closet where they had all mm -hmm. the silverware, the uh, china closet, they said it was, he, he, the butler said, it was the most finest china he has seen since he left Buckingham Palace. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That, Go on, Brian. <laughs> no, you know, it, it's pretty interesting that you say, you know, you went for the job with uh, Sylvester Stallone and you didn't get it. But now you got this job and you got this experience. It's almost like you were better off getting that job and getting the four years of experience in the fine dining rather than right out of the gate with Sylvester Stallone, because maybe you might not have been ready for that. Not just maybe, and it's a fantastic point. I've thought about this often. When I look back at my progression from, believe it or not, from the hospital all the way up to the beginning of working with celebrities, everything happened exactly the way it should have. Mm. You're absolutely right. I wasn't ready for that. I needed this other job. As a matter of fact, uh, I, was, I was with this elderly couple for about four years. And I was sitting around in the kitchen this one time with, believe it or not, the butler's name was James, James the butler. And I said, James, you know what? I, I, I'm getting so tired of this place. I said, the only thing it's missing is organ music. It was like working in a funeral home. You know? <laughs> I said, I would love to work for a young hotshot celebrity, right? Mm. And they had this Peruvian housekeeper. And she said to me, you go see my friend at this agency. She got job, Tom Cruise. Mm. I said, what? She goes, yeah, you go see. She got, he, she got job, Tom Cruise. But don't tell her you know who the job is for. Right? Okay. And I said, at that moment, I'm going to get that job. Right. So I go to see this agency. And I walked in. And what I year said, are we at right now? Sorry, what year are we at this, right now? It's uh, early nineties. Okay, so after cocktail, after like all that stuff, after okay, top yeah, gun. Yeah, this is right, right before the first Mission Impossible, right? Okay. So anyway, uh, I go in and I said to the lady, I said, "Look, so and so sent me. She said you've got an opening for a position, uh, and I'd like to apply for it." And she said, "Let me see your resume," and she chuckled. And I said, if you don't mind me asking what what's funny, she goes, well, I, I appreciate your interest, but looking for somebody that has a little bit more experience than you do. And I said, ma'am, with all due respect, get me that interview. I guarantee you I will get the job. I mean, I wanted that job more than anything. And she said to me, okay, uh, let me explain to you how this goes. You meet the assistant. If she likes you, she'll ask you to come back and cook her dinner. If she likes dinner, she'll ask you to come back and cook another dinner. But I'm here to tell you right now, nobody's ever been asked to come back and cook a second dinner. Mm. And I said, get me the interview. Guarantee you I will get the job. So what did you cook? What did I cook? Yeah, do you remember? My goodness. The, the, first, the first test that I did... Uh, she said, do whatever I wanted to do. Okay. And I remember, I'm, I'm, 
I knew enough. I mean, everybody knows, you know, what uh, Tom Cruise's background is like. You know, he's a health nut. He's in great shape and everything. So I tried to stay as healthy as I could. I did a couple of different types of growth fish and chicken. Um, so just light steamed vegetables. I did a, uh, if I remember correctly, I did like some different sorbets for dessert. Just trying to keep yeah. it light, but impressive enough in the presentations that, you know, they, they would see that I knew what I was doing. Nice. So uh, I'm assuming you were asked back a second time. And then at what point did he taste the food and give you the okay? That was uh, that was a while down the road, believe it or not. They, really? Yeah, they're, ve they're very busy. They're on the go all the time. So it was basically like they squeezed me in whenever they could. Yeah. Jeez. It sounds like a lot of work, which is impressive. Um, for somebody who takes frequent trips to fast food restaurants, I have to commend you. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I never saw too much of that. <laughs> so do you watch... Do you watch all these shows on TV like Chopped and these cooking shows and sit there and criti critique their dishes? Don't 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 tell this. Don't repeat this to anybody. But I can't stand them. I, I just I am so not interested in that stuff. I don't know. It's almost like you know a, a, a guy who's a fishing boat captain doesn't want to come home and watch uh, you know the most dangerous catch or something. It makes yeah. sense. You know. Yeah. It's like a baseball player just wants the off season to be a vacation. They don't yeah. want to watch any sports, you know. Yeah, it, it, exactly. It's a it's it, it's a it's a great point. Don't take don't 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 get me wrong. There's a lot of cooking shows out there that really serve a great purpose, mm -hmm. you know, for for you know the home cooks that you know they just don't have a background or they need new ideas, new fresh right. ideas and stuff. So it's a good thing for a lot of people. You know? Question uh, being from New Jersey. Yep. How was the culture out there when you first moved out there? Did you have to slow down yourself? Did you have to like adjust the way you talked, the way you acted, how fast paced you were, or did you fit right in? Well, I I think it's such a transient city that uh, I, I didn't feel like I had to fit in. I, I, I feel like for the first month I walked around, you know, looking up with wide eyes, just bumping into things because I couldn't believe where I was. Kept waiting for it to get cold, you know. I, I, I immediately joined a softball team. And, you know, the, the, the end of the summer comes in September, and I'm thinking I'm not going to see these guys until next June, right? And they're going, hey, uh, the winter season starts next month, and I was Yes, <laughs> I can play baseball all year round. Yeah, yeah and you can yeah. stay in shape all year round because you could go outdoors. Not like here, we're stuck no, inside for six months. Yeah, that's that's a great point. It was very interesting because my my brother, who who I followed out there, uh, was somewhat in the music business, and he turned me on to the to the softball league that turned out to be all people in the music industry, which was kind of cool. I mean, that that wasn't the direction I was going by any means, but the, the coach of our team was and still is the manager for uh, Alice Cooper. Um, mm. I, I, used to, I used to play against, I'm going to forget his name now. Oh, God, what's his name? I can't remember, but a couple other musicians and stuff. It was cool. Did you have to take it easy or were you really intense? Like you wanted to win. Were you yelling at people if oh, they no, made this errors? Was, this was serious stuff. Serious. Yeah. Okay. This was, this was not go to the Westbrook after the game and, and, and drink yourself silly. You know, nobody drank after, after the game. It was, uh, no, it was pretty serious. We would play uh, tournaments in Vegas and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I have one more question, Brian. I'll, I'll I'll get to you. Um, with you being an up and coming chef, um, we've had a lot of shark experts on, and they say even like the business of shark catching or tagging is very cutthroat. Um, is that the same when it comes to being a chef out in Hollywood? Yes, no. It, it is in the restaurant world. As a matter of fact, I, I have I have spoken with a number of uh, culinary schools uh, in in regards to the fact that. There isn't one culinary in school school in the country that has any kind of uh, classes that direct students towards the private chef world. Private chef world is virtually unknown, and it's the fastest growing part of the culinary world. 
what happens most of the time in, in especially with the more expensive schools is the, the, the students graduate, where do they want to work? They all want to go to the top hottest restaurants in the city, right? Those restaurants know that. So you think they're mm. going to be paying them anything special? No, they're going to be getting they're going to be getting paid minimum wage. They're going to work the longest hours. You come out of uh, a chef school and go into the private chef world, you're going to start at a minimum of fifty thousand dollars a year. Jeez, did you did you ever think of opening a private chef school? No, I'm not interested in that at all. I don't teach very well. I have very little patience. You got to go on, Brad. <laughs> I had. I, I did have a restaurant as you, you may yeah, know yeah, right, yeah. right at the at the the end of my stay in, in Los Angeles. And one time uh somebody approached me about, you know, donating my time to help out these young kids, you know, teach them how to make pizzas and stuff. And uh I agreed to it and like after the third kid I was like <laughs> I was ready to start drinking. Like, no, I'm good. I, I'm done with this. <laughs> Go on, Brian. Yeah. Now, when you go, when you enter culinary school, like, um, I'll I'll give an example for this. So, like, I went to school for exercise science, right? Now, it's a very broad field. You could be a personal trainer. You could go the physical therapy route. You could go uh, strength training, things like that. Um, how do you, like what are the different fields? Like, when you go into the like culinary school, like, do you pick a kind of like a direction that you want to go like hey i want to be a pastry chef i want to be a italian chef i want like do you specialize in something yeah pretty, pretty much it's, it's it's usually split right down the middle you're either going for traditional uh cooking or you're doing pastry a lot of people do both which is you know the, the best case scenario but also aside from the pastry part of it yeah, people will, I mean, just like being a physician, you know, you could you could become a physician, but where, where's your specialty going to be? Mm. Some people, it, it's it's more or less broken down into nationalities. You know, like you, you'll you'll learn uh, uh, the, the classics, the French classics, which is the way everybody should learn. And then you start to branch out uh, from there. Mm, okay. And what about, uh, what was I going to say? Because I remember, Scott, did did we go on, was it a class trip where we go to the Culinary Institute of America, the one in upstate? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. remember. What what grade was that that we did? 10th, uh, uh, maybe 10th. Was it? It was high yeah, school? Yeah, high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it was during home ec in high school. And I remember going to the one in upstate New York. And, like, I was genuinely interested in it. I'm not, like, a... I don't cook, like I can cook all right, and I very very loosely all right. I'm not saying I'm good at all, <laughs> but I remember being very uh, intrigued by like a lot of the different things I saw there. Um, now, is this like a is it like a school that you go and you stay there or you commute to? Oh, I mean, you would commute to culinary school. Yeah. Yeah, I would say you would commute to it. You know, if, if you don't mind, if we, if we go back to that that question about you yeah. know how cutthroat the business is, what's oh. very interesting about the private chef side of it is the 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 more successful you get, the higher you climb the ladder in in the entertainment world, the less people will know about you. It's just the opposite of the restaurant world. In other words, in the restaurant world, you you start to get popular. You open a restaurant or whatever, and you you know you get your face on Food and Wine magazine or whatever, and then you know New York Times is writing about you and this kind of thing. It's just the opposite in the private chef world because the the, the higher you get, the the if you're fortunate enough to work for people in the public eye, the the less you are known because the less you can talk about. Mm. Makes sense. The, yeah, confiden when... the confidentiality gets tighter and tighter and tighter. So nobody, it ends up that nobody even knows who you're working for. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So you could be working for like four people at one time and they won't even know. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand. Like, like you said, um, like if if you have four different clients, like um, if you're cooking for 
talking about celebrities. Clients. I'm, I'm talking just about people people on the street. People, oh, okay. in the, people in the media will will rarely know who the who the big private chefs are oh, because okay. those chefs can't say anything. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Makes sense. That's, yeah. yeah. That's that's interesting. So was that is that hard to keep yeah, like your Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is because look, you know, you're pr- I'll speak for myself. I can proud right. of myself. You know, I made it to this level. Uh, you know, you want to scream it from the tops of buildings, but you can't. You know, you just got to keep your mouth shut. You tell your, it, you, know, you tell your family and a couple of friends you can trust who you're working for, and um, yeah. It's almost like if you wrote songs for major artists, but you're not allowed to disclose it. And That's like the song becomes yeah. a number one hit and you're sitting there like, I should be getting credit. For That's, my yeah. That's, That's exactly, yeah, exactly how it is. I always <laughs> say that, that Cruz never looked better than he did in that first Mission Impossible. Because <laughs> of your cooking. Yeah, exactly. Now, when you, when you were cooking for these people, did you... Like, did you get to interact with them at all? Uh, yeah, you had to. You're in their house. You know, yeah, yeah well, I would just, like, there's, so, you. the thing is, like, you say a name like Tom Cruise, you would assume he's, like, in his own room. Nobody speaks to him. Somebody brings him the food. You know, they come back, and they're like, he accepted it. <laughs> no, no, no. He, he treated me like family. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you bet. Yeah, I mean, it was a high intense job, but I knew that going in. You know, we I knew we were going to be on the move all the time. Yeah. And from one day to the next, you kind of didn't necessarily know what was going to happen. But I wanted that. You know, I, yeah. I wanted to have that funeral home. I was in. And this is exactly what I wanted. And this is exactly what I got. So, yeah. And then if you could uh, speak on, uh, obviously, don't talk about your camera. So you went from Tom Cruise. And when I met you out in California a long time ago, you were working, you were cooking for Mel Gibson at the time, correct? Yeah. Exactly. How, how did that transfer happen? Uh, I left uh, Cruise after about two years. We parted company on good terms. There, uh, I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, we left, on, we left on real good terms. I was in between jobs, and believe it or not, this is no lie, mm-hmm. I bumped into a woman who grew up in Boundbrook. Wow. Who lived two blocks from my house in Boundbrook. Bumped That's into right. her in LA. We're, uh, we're both, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? So we got together. We we're hanging out. And she goes, well, what are you doing nowadays? And I said, well, actually, I'm in between jobs, private chef. She goes, you know, I work for Mel Gibson. And they're looking for a chef. And that, I, 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 I just, at that point, I thought, you know, as much as I liked working for Tom and stuff, I think I'm kind of done with uh, with Hollywood, you know, people. And she said, these people are different. Mm. Just to do the interview. And I said, oh, okay. Um, and just so you know, there, there's this sort of unwritten rule in the private chef world. The last two years, either they get tired of you or you get tired of them. Mm-hmm. I was with Mel Gibson for 13 years, and I, I really wish I, I could say that they couldn't live without my food, but that's certainly not the case. They were just the greatest people in the world. We're still friends. I'm still close with the entire family. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. What a surreal thing. That, like, how does that, how does it feel to like... The universe is just like working. Like yeah. you bump into somebody from where you're from and they happen to be looking. That's like, that's like a movie. You remember, remember yeah. I was saying earlier that when I look back, each step was preparing right. me, right? I always look back to the Tom Cruise days as I was doing boot camp, mm. right? If I can work for him mm. where we were on the go all over the world and perform to the best of my ability, I can do it anywhere. Right. And here comes this job with Mel Gibson. And it took me a good month to wind down because yeah. the atmosphere was the exact opposite. Laid back, easy going. And like I said, 13 years. Yeah. And then... Was, um, was it more up with, with Tom Cruise? Say it again? Was it like more uptight with Tom Cruise? I, I wouldn't say uptight. It, it was 
I wish I wish I could come up with an example. I mean, th there are jobs that are just busier than others. Mm. This yeah. was a busy job. And like I said, I, I always knew that going in. There's no no complaints of, about it, and I was always treated with the utmost respect. Mel, on the other hand, it wasn't that busy, but they mm. they were they didn't live that kind of lifestyle. And when I started there, there were uh, six kids. So every year after the two years with Mel Gibson, were you just like expecting to part ways and it just kept year, another year, yeah, another well, year? Like, Because I had been in the private chef business long enough to know and talking to a handful of other private chefs that I knew, we used to talk about these these dream jobs that we hear about, you know, to hear about, you know, some usually, you know, some of the old time actors would have like the same butler for 50 years, you know, and leave mm -hmm. his house to do him in the will, that kind of stuff. And, but we would hear about stuff like that, but only more contemporary. I knew once I was with Mel and his family for a couple of months that I had stumbled onto this dream job. Um, so you went into the restaurant business. So, were you preparing for that almost your whole career? Like one day I'm going to do this. And was it everything you thought it would be? Or was it more, more hectic than you thought it would be? When I was working for Mel, whenever they uh, would travel and didn't need me, uh, I was allowed to go up to the Culinary Institute of America up above uh, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And it's take a week classes. Uh, and this one week I'm up there, I'm noticing that this one class is pulling these uh, portable wood-fired ovens out of this out of this closet. And they're lighting them with wood and stuff. And I'm going, man, that is cool, right? So I got the name of the manufacturer. When I got back to L.A., it turns out that they're manufactured just a few miles from me. So I bought one and had it built in the backyard, right, right. for pizza, classic neapolitan pizza right pulled that first pizza out and i said man this is cool i gotta tell you when, when i used to work for for the celebrities right i would get every food periodical that was known to man and i would go through them and i would tear recipes right and save the ones that I thought would work for the people I was working for. And I would read these articles about these, these, you know, these hot young chefs, right, in their restaurant. I remember reading this article about this one guy who would stand on a ladder, right, and dust his desserts with powdered sugar so that it flowed down like it looked like snow. And I'm going, hey, you know what? I, I, I like cooking, man, but... That's, I, I'm not that interested in it until I pulled that first pizza out of that oven at my house. Mm. I said, this is what I am passionate about. Yeah. So mm. after Mel and uh, before I, I moved to South Carolina, uh, I opened up uh, Flame Pizzeria. But Where was that, Sam? That, that was in the San Fernando Valley. In, San Fernando in Valley. Uh, but I still had to continue working. I worked for a number of different people after Mel um, and uh, before I opened the restaurant. So you said that the higher like you get as a private chef, you have to kind of like be obscure, you know, keep your mouth shut. Why not? So like how do people do the celebrities talk? Like does Mel Gibson then say to someone, I got a great chef. Like how does your name get out there then? How, how is that? I mean, there's no getting around the fact that I can have a resume. And um, right. I'm, I'm very lucky to say that uh, after a after Mel's job ended um, and I had to find other work, uh, it was fairly easy. I, I was telling all the agencies that I was signed up with in Los Angeles. I was saying, look, I, you know, I, I really want to stay away from the Hollywood thing. And every job they'd send me up for was somebody in the public eye because – People who are in the public eye who need a chef, they th their main concern is confidentiality. And if right. they see that a record of uh, of uh, Tom and Mel and a handful of other people, they say, oh, we can trust this guy. You know? Yeah, no, that makes sense. So the restaurant business then uh, in the oh, right. in, yeah, in California, uh, 
when did you just how long did you run that before you moved to south carolina and did you sell it or is it still under your name yeah i i, I sold it i i uh, i was the owner uh chef uh, uh, operator for nine years um at la and uh the other communists in california make it so difficult for small business that i uh i never paid myself i made every pizza Right, the, the the pizza oven, the, the wood fired pizza oven, was centrally located in the center of the dining room, so everybody could could watch the pizzas being made. made. And right. It was a bit upscale. I mean, we had some high end wines and and great beers and stuff in there. Um, and I never paid myself, and I never made a penny of profit. Wow! In, in nine years. And it was all because of the draconian uh, regulations they have in the county of Los Angeles and the state of California. In what regard? Like, why? How did the business just, it just broke even then every year? Yeah. Broke, uh, I lost money the first two and a half years. I managed to break even in the third, and it just stayed at that. And one, I'll just give you one example because the rest could just bore you to death. But right. they, they had a uh, $15 minimum wage. Okay. Right. So yeah. I had four servers, right? I was only open for dinner. Uh, so the servers' positions were part time. Those servers could make $50,000 a year mm. just by, by the, the high minimum wage and the amount of tips that they would make. Plus, I was off the charts. As far as uh, restaurant reviews go, I had over 600 reviews. I had 650 reviews when I left, and 600 of them were five star. I was written up in the LA Times, uh, the Los Angeles Daily News, a number of other very, very reputable uh, restaurant uh, magazines. Yet I couldn't make a penny. Damn! Do you yeah. ever? Do you ever wish? Do you ever wish you could have? Like so? Then obviously. You moved to South Carolina. Was it just because of the regulations you got tired of out there? Or you just you were kind of done and worn out from everything. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, look, when I moved out there, I was in my early twenties. It was a great place to live. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was good for for me at that age, and and it it was different. It just was different. By the time I left, it had gone so far over the cliff. That I don't know how it still exists anymore. It's just, it's just insane. It's really sad what's happened. What is the secret to a good pizza? Now the crust, absolutely, absolutely, hundred percent. I'm with you. Now, is there a special kind of dough? Well, just, just so you understand, wood fired pizza is what is called traditional Neapolitan, meaning yeah. it, it is. It is from the origin, right, in Naples. It's completely different than New York pizza. New York pizza is a hybrid uh, of what the original pizza is. And just as an aside, I am way more partial to New York pizza than I am to Neapolitan pizza. I didn't even like my pizza that much. But it was classic, just classic. It's got a, a heavier uh, protein uh, in the flour. It's a very uh, wet dough. It has a you know high um, uh, water content, mm -hmm. and that's because of the way it was originally cooked in these wood fired ovens. They're really really hot. So you know you see the classic New York uh, uh, pizza maker. He's spinning the pizzas around. You know you could never do that with Neapolitan dough. You you pull it a couple times and it stays there. Wow. And you get it into that super hot oven, and it only takes two, two, between two and three minutes, and bang, it's done. Yeah. Wow! Now, what That's about awesome. the what about the sauce? Is there a specific type of tomato? Yeah, ironically, when uh, when Mel was doing the uh, passion in Italy, I had already known that somewhere down the road I was going to open up this pizzeria, mm. and I, I came back with about ten different cans of tomatoes, you know, to. Uh, to try in the oven. Ironically, I ended up with an American one called a Cento, which is absolutely terrific. But once again, classic Neapolitan pizza, the sauce cooks on the pizza. It's a raw sauce. It's a wow. crushed tomatoes, 
little bit of garlic, a little bit of salt, a little bit of basil, and that's it. It's not cooked. It's cooked on top of the pizza. Wow. Rich, this is awesome because we got some background and how to make a pizza. Ha, we got you. People yeah. usually have to pay for that, and we got it out here for free. I got it just a couple more questions. These are a little Whatever fun. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. These are a little fun. Um, I do want to know, when's the last time you had Chich's Pizza? Three weeks ago. Really? Yeah, I was home. I was home real quick trip for a 45th uh, uh, class reunion. I stayed at my brother's, and when I got there, he had three different uh, 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 Chich's pies. Did, did it taste like childhood, but, like you remember no, Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's one of those things like in L.A. when I would try to explain to people, I would say, what, their sausage pizza? You don't understand. It's ground, and it's like it's spread on the pizza, and there's no cheese, and they look at me like, what are you, nuts? I say, yeah, you don't get it. <laughs> they don't get it. It's fantastic. It's the greatest pizza you'll have. So if you... <laughs> If you had to choose, would you pick the L.A. weather or New Jersey pizza for the rest of your life? I'd have to, yeah, I'd have to go more with the L.A. weather because I just hate Ooh. the cold. I hate the cold. <laughs> All right. All right. What was the one thing that you, your client, uh, who you work for, liked that you hated making? Like one dish, you were like, oh, I hate making this. Was there anything? I think it was probably this, and it was my own fault because it was one of my uh, inventions, was these marinated grilled vegetables. And yeah. it's, it's, it sounds simple, but there were so many vegetable items in this dish that it took me forever to to prep them. And then I had to make the marinade, which they had to sit in uh, overnight. Then I had to grill them. Then I had to put them back in the marinated. And then they sat overnight again. So it was a real long process. It was just, it was laborious and boring. Gotcha. And what's, aside from your pizza, what do you think your best dish is? Bouillabaisse. Bouillabaisse and croup, which is, uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, bouillabaisse is a, is a French seafood soup and if you make it in crude it means in a crust and what you do is you bake them individually in these bowls so you've got uh this sort of very involved french broth that has uncooked shellfish in it and then you make what's called puff pastry and you seal it on the top of the bowl and you mm. bake it in the oven and when the broth starts to steam, it pushes the pastry up and it comes out with this beautiful big dome and you kind of cr uh, crunch through it and there's great delicious seafood in there. I love doing that. I wish I had that with me. I think after this interview, I'm going to go upstairs and just microwave a circular pizza and it's going to taste like a tire, but it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, go, go to Chitch's. I can't. It's too far now. I live 30 minutes away from me. home. Is that right? Yeah. It's right. Yeah, Brian lives uh, the town right over. So he's right there. Um, since you have a distinguished palate and you've eaten the best foods and you cook amazingly, do you get a guilty pleasure sometimes? And do you ever go to fast food restaurants or you can't even look at that? All, 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 all the time. All the time. Which fact, one? I, yeah, go. What's your choice one? I was just telling this story just the other day about how when I was working for all those different caterers early on, I got to be very friendly uh, with this other chef that w we would be called upon by coincidence to work on the same party. So we got to know each other, right? And so we'd be prepping a few hours before the, the party started. And somehow we got on this topic of what we ate when we were growing up and what we liked, right? Mm -hmm. And he goes, grilled cheese. I go, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And I go, but you got to have Campbell's tomato soup. And he goes, yeah. yeah. And he goes, what cheese? And I go, Delfina. And the chef, who was much older than us, who was running the kitchen, he overheard us and he turned to us and he goes, 
it must really suck to be you. And I thought, I mean, I wasn't going to speak up. I wanted to keep my job. But, but we both talked about it later. We said, it must suck to be him. Yeah. Because he, he has this pompous attitude of he will only eat high-end stuff. He misses a lot of the good stuff. You oh, know, yeah. Kind of hold in the best. more places. Yeah. I nothing, like like a, nothing like a Whopper or a Big oh, Mac. <laughs> Absolutely. Did you ever, so did, the, did the celebrities ever get those like cravings to where instead of you cooking, they're like, we're just going to go to McDonald's? Did that happen? I'll tell you another story, but I can't, I can't necessarily tell you who, who I was working That's for. Fine, yeah. That's fine, yeah. So uh, I'm cooking away, getting, getting dinner ready for this one client, right? And you certainly would know who, who these people were. And they came into the kitchen and they said, I'm wearing my chef whites and I'm cooking away, you know. And they said, hey, Richard, um, we don't want to insult you, but we're really craving Italian from this one restaurant. Is oh, that my God. You know, I, <laughs> what am I thinking? I get out of work early. What do I care, you know? <laughs> and then they go, would you mind going to pick it up for us? No, nah, no problem, right? So I go down to this restaurant. I had never been there before. And when I walked in, it was an open kitchen, right? The, mm. the chefs were all out front. And there I am in my chef's lights, picking up food to go. <laughs> and and the chefs go, hey, chef, what's the matter? You can't make food like this for yourself? Oh, and I said, I said, no, nah, it's not that. I said, it's just my people like junk food every once in a while. <laughs> That's good. I was so pissed off at that. Yeah. <laughs> Rich, uh, honestly, you've been more than gracious for your time, man. Uh, uh, if you're ever in Jersey again, you know, hit us up. Let us know. Meet up at Chitch's. Uh, yeah, grab absolutely. a beer or something. Uh, <laughs> Susie, thanks for coming on, though. I really appreciate it. Is there anything you want to... Uh, Plug your book or where people could find uh, your your stuff. No, uh, I mean you can go to Amazon for the Private Chef. Uh, I wrote about fifteen years ago. Um, I still think it uh, it helps a lot. A lot of people approach me about. It. They said it's a it's a it's an excellent book for beginners to mm. take people from uh, you know from casual to upscale. Teaches you how to do that. Uh, I'm 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 just about to start a business down here doing um, uh, private cooking classes for people. So I'll let you know about that maybe next time around. 